Recording has started. Hello and welcome once again to Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie the Professor Esser, and with me as always is the Blue Eyed Bomber from the Burger Pits. Phil, fill me and perch. He's the one. That's the man who knows the that Iron City beer is the beer of the gods. That's right, kids. We're going all the way back to... Uh, actually, I have no idea if any of these were in this Jim Shooter era. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going back to the creation of the Time Variance Authority, uh, which is a timeless organization that is also bound by time, I imagine, in some, some way or another. Um... I'm your host, uh, well, we already did that, the hosting thing. Yeah. So, anyway, here's the thing about the TVA. They, they are now very popular because they have been, they have been, uh, immortalized in the new Loki series. But they actually, much like Loki himself, have a convoluted and, if you will, mixed up history that doesn't quite flow a to B to C, where it's like uh, things are referenced, but they don't reference the TVA, and then the TVA gets referenced, but it's not quite the TVA, because I really think that when we first get the TVA, it is in Thor, um, let's see, I'm trying to get back to it, that's the one where we get Justice Peace, but that TVA doesn't look anything like the TVA that we get when we get to Fantastic Four. Well, like in that first Thor appearance, like Justice Peace, uh, basically he even tells, or no, does he say it later? Let's like Justice Peace. I don't think technically is a member of the TVA, but it says sometimes they use freelancers, which was Justice Peace, who came from like in like in you know one of those future timelines. Yeah, but I don't think he says that until maybe not the Fantastic the Fantastic Four. Fours. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the idea, is that this whole Justice Peace thing, because he is essentially, but it's weird, because he mentions the TVA, the TVA sending him back, the fact that, um, what, what's, what's, what is our villain's name in this? Zani- Bizarre? Zaniac. Biz- Bizaniac, was it? Zaniac, like maniac. Zaniac. Zaniac. Oh my gosh, how'd they get that? the rights to that uh, from uh, from Steven Spielberg? What, what was the character that Steven... Spielberg had oh um no, no that's not was that freakazoid freakazoid or freakazoid yeah. that's right no he had the animaniacs and yeah. this is the zaniac part of me feels like there was that they were probably going to call that call freakazoid the zaniac and then Marvel hit him with a copyright I don't know I, I don't mean, know when this came out <laughs> yeah the zaniac thing was weird because I was just reading that this morning it's uh I don't know like some entity like I said lived in rats and whenever the rats would bite people like it could like possess these bodies and stuff and mm-hmm. it, it eventually survived the justice pieces is just as peace as time like he was saying oh it's like right after World War seven you know <laughs> yes World War seven you know so yeah so they you know I you know what's very sad about World War seven hmm. you'd think by World War seven we might have gotten another planet involved it's like really we're up to seven and we can't even get one Martian invasion you can, you can just see that the Martians just just give them time give them hey. time let's just move in when they're done hey I mean look look the Miss Universe contest everyone's from Earth mm-hmm well that's because they're not applying that's what yeah, I say true. you know there's nothing that says you have to be from Earth to be Miss Universe. Oh, that'd be funny. Just be like, I'm not entering that. They only have two boobs. Come on. Well, you know. Well, honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, the first three boob contestant, she or he may have the inside track. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. There is still a talent competition. Let's not forget. There's going to be people protesting because, you know, there's there's people protesting against transgender people, you know, doing stuff like that. You know, they're going to be protesting the first Martian or something. You, you know, it's good. Well, yeah, but I, I, you know, what I want them to, I want them to add a math section oh. to Miss Universe. I really want, I want to see these ladies up there at the board solving for X. Nothing's hotter than a woman that can solve for X. Just ask Wolverine. Oh, jeez. Solve for X. All right, getting back to this. Yeah, because Justice Peace is very much supposed to be, um, oh, what are they called? The um, Sylvester Stallone played one. Oh, Judge Dredd. 
Yeah, it very much. It's a judge. It's another Judge Dredd character. In yeah. fact, it's, he's from Bro- Brooklynopolis, which is the whole the mega city of of I guess what used to be <laughs> the United States, going down to the Panama Basin, where obviously in World War Six maybe they actually <laughs> widened the Panama Canal, if you will. And, uh, so, I, so I wonder if, as time goes on in the MCU, if eventually we'll see like uh, you know the TVA popping up every so often and like hiring, uh, you know, freelancers or guns for hire. Because in that Fantastic Four time bubble story, wasn't uh, Death's Head uh, like another? Uh, yeah. Well, what's interesting freelancer? about that whole time bubble idea is the idea that um, you know that goes into that what has now been canonized as the uh what what do, what do we want to call it the um the sliding time of that bubble around the universe that things get pulled forward and things get back because they say there's this bubble of time between you know that goes 15 years in other direction which is sort of like oh yeah because that's how long yeah, no. Comic but book it, cycles go. It first showed up in that Avengers storyline. I think they said, was it like 40 years or something? Or like, yeah, there's like a bubble of 40 years. Like, no one can like penetrate it and stuff. Even Kang couldn't get through it and stuff. Yeah. Well, that's actually something that's mentioned in Mobius, in, in Meet Mobius, which is Fantastic Four 353, <laughs> where Mobius makes the point, your entire universe was supposed to be pruned. Hey, our first reference to pruning. Oh. Your entire universe was supposed to be pruned 40 years ago. And then, and then basically says, but the Fantastic Four stopped the pruning of that universe. Well, yeah, they got the nullify, ultimate nullifier, and it basically nullified that. Uh, well, is that what he's talking about, or is that a meta commentary about how Fantastic Four essentially saved the Marvel Universe by creating this offshoot of superhero comics. Well, like, I don't think the bubble was supposed to... Oh, I mean, maybe, event, maybe it was, but I mean, I think I mean, bubble, I, I kind of feel like it's meta-commentary. Yeah. I don't think it's like... Yeah, obviously it's going to tie to some moment. Because I think it was like, in the story, it was like some future. It was like in the future, so like they basically nullified that future so another future could take its place because basically mm-hmm. the whole universe was going to be destroyed, so they're like, yeah, let's destroy this in a... Make, yeah, because remember Galactus had that big thing that someone had Galactus set up to like eat the whole universe. <laughs> well, I guess that I mean I don't know what happened. The, I don't know what actually happens in the Brink Crunch that leads to the thing, but I don't see a Galactus eating it. We don't know what Galen's universe was. We we assume it was in Tropic Doom, but mm-hmm. we don't really have a guarantee of that. And maybe there was a third force. I think they're going to be introducing Galactus's mother soon in some story. I don't know. Or did they always? Yeah, there was something. Yeah, I saw, what was that, about Galactus' mother? And everyone's like, wasn't he like the last uh, survivor? Well, but he, well, Galen had a mother. And so Galen, maybe it's yeah. Galen's, maybe Galen's mom survived too. Maybe Galen's mom is the mourner. That'll work. I, I can live with that. That makes sense. Although the mourner doesn't make sense because they, Although to be fair, um, well, no, because oh. they may, they give her like elder of the universe status, but she's kind of supposed to be an actual esoteric force. It's very weird. I don't know. I don't get the mourner. I'm never going to get the mourner. I think they needed to workshop that a bit more before they put her in. But I, I understand that you know it's a very tight deadline to get comic books done. So. I'm not going to fault him for it. Well, I don't know if it's going to be a flashback or, you know, they might just bring her in because it's going to take place. Did you see there's a new Defender series coming out? It's going to be in there. Yeah, yeah. Written by yeah, they- written by your old friend Al Ewing, so. Oh, Al Ewing. Well, you know, I do like a lot of his stuff. Probably other stuff I hate, you know. That, that's something I find about comic book writers. Most comic book writers have a book that I absolutely adore and a book I absolutely hate. <laughs> So, you know, it's like, oh, I liked it when they did that. I did not like when they did that. That was when they crossed the line. Yes, but remember, he he also was writing. Uh, he's the one who I think he I think Al's the one who uh, made Galactus the life bringer in that Ultimate series we were covering. Oh, well, I liked that. So, so see, th- these are these things. these are these things I like. And then there's things that I both simultaneously love and hate, like Immortal Hulk, where I like the story, hate the body horror. And now we've got that over in Gamma Flight. 
why with the body horror? We don't need it. But let's get back to the TV. That's what we're actually here to talk about today. Um, and one of the things I, again, sort of like we talk about in our last Evergreen episode, the Loki episode, when we talked about planet Olympus um, and this idea of these places not being these alternate universes, but actually just being a physical place in space that you could travel to. Um, here we have a very interesting thing with regard to magic in Amortis' castle. Because when the hand, because first off, we do know, because that's what we're are opening up on this, um, is basically when they put Thor back into the universe, he is dealing with the fact, and I'm trying to find that. Uh, let me go back to. Let me go back to. I have it pinned on my on my phone here. Mm-hmm. Then when we when we get to Thor, which episode is this? Two eighty two, and it opens up with Thor trapped between dimensions. As the this was in published nineteen seventy nine, so he was still he was still. Uh, Don Blake in 1979. Mm-hmm. Um, because essentially what it is, is the space phantom. Again, an interesting thing where his his culture prides duplicity. And so it's like, if you're not lying to me, I'm not trusting you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, that's just their morals. And he is caught between limbo and... Um, the space phantom's planet because the space phantom is trying to pull his planet out of limbo, which got caught in limbo because of the ongoing time wars. It gets crazy. So, and the idea is that once he's been, when he's outside of limbo for 60 seconds, he turns back into Don Blake. And so when half of him is outside of limbo, half of him turns back to Don Blake. But when he gets pulled back in, now he's all Thor again. But they have to go get his hammer because he can't do this without the hammer. Um, you know, they fight through some stuff as you do to get to the castle of Amortis. Sorry, to uh, I believe they say that this is Chronopolis, um, or maybe they don't. I don't know. But uh, you have Tempest who is constantly trying to kill himself because uh, he does not because existence is pain. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's one of the things that, uh, Immortus says is that all of his, that, you know, his servants, like the space fandom, are really not helpful. Um, but we see that Immortus can pick up the hammer because in this world, only his magic is, is what works. So Mm -hmm. Odin's magic doesn't work here, just like in the TVA. So I found that was a nice thing. Um... And I'm sure a lot of this gets retconned later, gets changed later. In fact, we even see that he's using up all of his time energy from his hammer here, comes up in the next issue related to the Time Variance Authority, which is Thor... Come on, work with me. Work with me, Robot. Mm -hmm. Which is Thor 272, where he has to use the um, energies that... Maybe there's still just a little bit of time variance energy in my hammer to allow me to recharge your time sled. Oh, yes. Yes. See, now, why didn't Loki think of that when uh, their, their, their time device, the little time time uh, iPad was uh, was out of juice? Yeah, um, uh, yeah I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, how's he going to call his brother at that point? That It's a little difficult. Sure. But, um. Oh, the hammer's not even. The hammer, as far as we know, is still destroyed, too. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is true. That is, although, Loki wouldn't know that yet. Mm, oh, that Loki wouldn't know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I got to say, I am I'm missing. Uh, what's his name? Thug. <laughs> trying to figure out what his name is. Thug Thompson? Oh, yeah. Uh, Thug Thatcher. Love me some Thug Thatch. Yeah, the guy Zaniac takes over, yes. Yeah. Ah, he's delightful. Uh, 
And once Saniac takes him over, he gets like he gets like elf ears and pointy teeth. So clearly, that's how you know he's he's evil. Um, yeah, Justice Peace. He's 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 fun, uh, and he does confirm that Thor is who he says he is. So he says, "Okay, my bad. Don't don't need to kill you." Um, which seems like kind of the thing. Oh, and this is there's a little side bit in here because we have the two kids. Um, going to live with Volstag. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to those kids, man? I th- I think they died in Ragnarok at some point. I don't know. One of the Ragnarok. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. They, for the most part, I don't think we ever see them again. After I mean, this was Walt Simonson's run. I don't. After he was done writing, I'm not sure if we they ever really did much with them. No, they. Do, well, I mean, yeah, they come back in Walt Simonson's run, but um, what is it? I want to say we get them as teenagers in like one of the later, mm. one of the more recent Ragnaroks. Yeah, yeah. Fighting for Asgard. I want to say I read that in a Wikipedia article. So, yeah. So you know they lived all their life as mortals in Asgard. So I'm sure they that never caused any problems for them being literally you know humans in the Asgard. Although who knows? Maybe it toughened them up. Maybe it made them into like super soldiers kind of thing. You know. Or maybe they ate some freaking golden apples of a dune, and then they're like, oh, actually, now we're gods, too. Cool. Because people forget that. If you just have to eat the dang a dune's golden apples, and you live forever. So <laughs> that works. You know, maybe we should eat some of those. Oh. But yeah, in, in this issue, I don't think Justice, I'm trying to remember, Justice Peace doesn't say anything about the Time Variance Authority, right? He just says he got sent back. To, 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 no, he does say TVA. Okay. He does say that because I was looking for that because I was thinking, wait, what's that? Isn't he supposed to be with the TVA? And let me, I'll, I'll find the page. I'll oh, find that's the page. right. He, say, he says they, they authorized. They said he could come back and try to stop Zaniac. Yeah. Stop yes, that's right. Trigger. Yeah. Although I found it very interesting, one of these things that when you actually get the TVA look here, the one we actually see watching the Hulk looks like the Space Phantom. Mm. So maybe after we saved uh, Tempest. A lot of those old uh, Tempusian, Tempusians. Uh, huh. I'm just okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, so these kids are actually Thug Thatcher's kids, I think. Okay. Uh, and Jane Foster's pregnant in this story. I don't know what happens with that kid. That's a story. I don't remember that. I don't remember that coming of going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's. One of those, pre- I, I think it's one of those things where they gave, they like, heaped on a bunch of tragedy at the end of their story when yeah. she comes back later. You know, yeah. oh, I have cancer. And yes, all those plot points they dangled, yeah, they've gotten rid of all of those. So, in the most tragic ways possible. So, <laughs> yay. As long as we have a nice, tidy timeline, that's, that's what's important. Mm. A. Sacred timeline, if you will, Philip. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm looking. I'm, I, I was just looking. Go ahead. Keep going. I was just looking to see if they said anything about the, you know, what happened to her child or anything like that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting when we get to Mobius, when we actually get to meet Mobius um, in Fantastic Four uh, 353, I believe it is. Um, they actually don't have a sacred timeline, but they control what splits. Mm-hmm. So every time you get a split, it's like it needs to be, and this I I think goes to that idea that I've often suggested, which is that the splits occur and they are, but if they're minor enough, that universe just falls back into the main timeline. So like, you know, like you can say, well, if you're late for work one day, that could lead to a variant timeline, but truth be told, it probably isn't going to lead to a variant timeline. I mean, yeah, it could. I because mean, you were late. I mean, you could have been in a car yeah. accident. You could have died. You could have killed somebody else. I, yeah, it's... Yeah, but, but the idea is, is that most... So, I mean, they do that to give you an idea of the weight of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm get, I get the feeling that just those little things, that those kind of things happen, but that when they do that timeline, mostly just rejoins the main timeline. Because... Not enough variance is going to happen. That's why they can prune it to a certain point, but if it gets to a certain point, they can't prune it anymore. And I imagine that some time variations take care of themselves. Because hmm. obviously, 
all of them walking into a Ren Faire when they delete that universe, th- th- that's a thing that happened, but it's not going to, generally speaking, disrupt that timeline. You know, one of the, you know, one of the big criticisms of the Time Variance Authority, although not true, not true of Justice Peace, is in the MCU Time Variance Authority, they don't have ranged weapons. Mm. And the reason they don't have ranged weapons is because if you miss on a ranged weapon, you're going to cause more damage to the timeline. Mm-hmm. So you only want something that is short range and that can obliterate whatever you, you're you dealing with in one shot. Hmm. And that's why it's just a short range. One, one thing you count the coup that, that, that timeline is pruned because if it was something that you had to throw and they duck and now you've just pruned out, you know, uh, James Jehoshaphat and you don't know who James Jehoshaphat is because he got pruned, but he was actually supposed to be the inventor of the car that runs on water. So thanks CVA. That's why you're not supposed to throw those. Anyway, um, yeah, so, and honestly, Reed's uh, plan to escape the TVA seems to be to blow up the TVA. No, uh, wasn't it that um, he uh, kind of uh, inserted a computer virus so, like, their timeline wouldn't show up, like, in the TVA's data bank or whatever? It seemed to be like, yeah, well, it seemed to be like he started splitting the TVA into alternate universes. Yeah. Kind of like, like, TV, like, splitting the TVA's own in- internal timeline. So that, yeah, but the idea is that he separates the 616 from the TVA's authority, which... He clearly doesn't, but I guess in the short term. I mean, for a while, for many years, it seemed like it worked, but yeah, eventually they brought it back. And I didn't quite understand why they all had to take off their clothes. Oh, that that uh, those those weird aliens who were like uh, train conductors. Like the the price was like Earth cloth, which again, I don't did they even mention there was unstable molecules. But yeah, it's like yeah, these aliens yeah. wanted like the Earth cloth or whatever, so. Ah, uh, I see. Which, again, I is see. more valuable than regular Earth cloth. It's unstable molecules. Well, maybe they knew it was unstable molecules. Maybe that's yeah. just what they thought Earth cloth was. Because they let them keep their bras and panties and their uh, underwears. So, yep. thank goodness Jenny wasn't going commando that day. <laughs> By the way, when you jump around, it's interesting that in this one, the thing is in his mutated form again. And Sharon Venture is back to being human. Yep. And now, re- now he's having all these weird things because we saw, like, in the last one, there was the whole thing like uh, at the start of this when we first introduced Mobius and and uh, the TVA in the time bubble. It's like, um, you know, she's like human, but she doesn't want to go back to being a thing. But they also deal with the idea that she doesn't want to give up being a thing because she's so vulnerable as a human, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, well, maybe we can figure out a way. Now at this point. I'm wondering if this is after she sold sold them out to Doom and he's turned her back to a human for a while. I, I wasn't following the FF at this time. Well, yeah, 350 is when, yeah, he, Doom kind of turns her human and that's when Ben Grimm becomes a thing again. And then, yeah, at the end of this TVA thing, it's like we change creative teams. So I don't think we even see Sharon for like another year or something. So, yeah, it's yeah, well, at least a year ago. What are you going to do? Um... And then when we see her again, she's the thing again. So I don't know. It's weird. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, no, because doesn't she go into be a monster thing at one point? Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, oh, yeah, Doom cured her. But then, yeah, when she comes back, it's kind of like she's like start after a while, she starts mutating. And yeah, and some weird. It's not even a thing. It's just like. Some... Oh, but they, they get her back to human at this point. Uh, I don't. I don't know yeah. if they dropped I, I'm that not too. sure. Like I said, I wasn't actually reading the Fantastic Four yeah. as much as this is like one of the this is one of my gaps in my Fantastic Four memory. Yeah, because it was around because she came, for reasons she, I guess she came what, back and started so. working with the group against them. That's around that time where you know Doom and Reed supposedly died. You know. Yeah, I remember that. See, that I remember yeah. reading. You know, and it's weird. It's it's you know you know and especially before I understood the power of a pull list it was always a little harder to get yeah. in on things and also when your money was much more limited you know that was the weird thing is like you know there was a time 
when comic books were really expensive to me because my budget was limited, even though comics were cheap. Yeah, and then there, were, there was like there was that point where it's like I was just buying off the spinner rack until I discovered like the uh, you know an mm-hmm. actual comic shop. Yeah, yeah, it gets weird, my friend. It gets weird. Um, but yeah, the TVA. I mean, it is an interesting concept. It makes sense to some extent, but again, like I say, and you get a real um, presentation of it here, which is this idea that you know. Once things split, how do you deal with that? You know, how do you deal with this infinite number of things? Although one thing I do like in this, and I was actually waiting for them to do the line from Loki here, because when the FF is on trial, they make the point that, well, why aren't the X-Men here? Why aren't the Avengers here? You know, they've all been messing with time travel a lot. (laughs) Why are we getting singled out? Now, obviously, one could point out that they are the ones that led to every other, uh, because every other time variance that occurred. But I remember them to say those time variances were supposed to happen. I was hoping that was going to be their their answer, and it wasn't. Well, I think um, I think all the like, yeah, the X Men, the Avengers. It's like they were kind of just like traveling through time. No, at this point, yeah, the Fantastic Four actually like nullified that that future timeline. So it's like, oh yeah, you yeah. actually destroyed some. And I think the TVA might have had a hand in that. So they're like, oh yeah, you basically you know blew up our work. So yeah, so yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting, and then you know, but again, that was all a part of Reed's plan. And I actually like Sue, like trusting Reed in this moment when mm. she's like, you know, obviously you have to explain it for, you don't have to explain it to anyone but my brother. And Johnny gets to be our little audience surrogate. Yes, please explain what happened. Although we all knew, it's like, yeah, obviously he's got a plan. He's stalling. He's yeah. like a good Loki. He's stalling. But th- but then in like this story, unlike the MCU, it's like they weren't just trying to create, what the TVA wasn't trying to create one timeline. They were trying to, they were just keeping the all, all the timelines supposedly running smoothly. Yes, well, that's the idea. Well, because I guess the idea is, is like, you know, every timeline is someone's sacred timeline. And they're being much more beneficent, I guess. Um, but that gets too confusing for bureaucracy. And it's 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 funny because it's, it's intended to be a self-replicating bureaucracy. Oh, yeah, they even show that, yeah, they're like, oh, every time there's a new timeline appears, a, a new guy, a new yeah. desk appears. and. But what's funny is, is that when you make, because it's sort and it's sort of this, and I guess this is where we get what our current TVA in the MCU is, because if you look at it, someone like Justice Peace, it's clearly meant to be somewhat fascistic. When we get to this one, it seems much more you know, timelines are allowed, but when you break with what we're doing, then it's a problem. Mm. You know, and this idea of the sacred timeline, and I'm really, you know, I actually did not get to get into my She-Hulk uh, touches on this, because as you will recall, the she- She-Hulk eventually becomes a magistrate, mm who I want to say works with both the Living Tribunal and the TVA. Maybe I'm misremembering it, but I know that there's this whole thing, because that's that's one of the ways that Hawkeye gets back. And it's a weird thing that apparently they don't even have a single way that people come back into life anymore. Because she brings Hawkeye back from his death at the hands of Scarlet Witch. And then... And in the She-Hulk comics, he knows that's how he came back. But in other versions, it's just no Scarlet Witch's creation was just a fantasy, and I never really died. So, well, I think it was a weird thing too because it was like it happened before House of M, but then she altered reality in House of M, and then when it got put back, Hawkeye just like suddenly appear, you know, just appears in the middle of the screen. Yeah. like oh, where where it happened? Well, because that's the thing, and that that's well, because that. See, and that was one of the weird things with that, because she eventually, because, okay, now, now I'm remembering it. So what happens is she wants to bring Hawkeye back. She can't bring Hawkeye back because they say, no, he's supposed to die. But she has her, has him testify at her trial and she slips him a note. That note is what brings him back. Mm. 
when he goes back in time. It's weird, but that's how we get Two Gun Kid in the future, who has been forgotten about. But Hawkeye left him his Knights of Wondergore Sky Cycle, which I don't know what Two Gun Kid is doing now. Um, he was cool. They bring him. They bring references to him back of, uh, on a regular basis. Because if you remember in the Old Man Star Lord series, it's the Two Guns Kids kid. kid or his grandkid who gives him two gun kids old guns. Yeah. Except there's only one left, so it's only the one gun kid for a girl. Oh, by the way, that's now, I guess, a podcast. They're doing an old man quill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcast. And it's not on Stitcher. Huh. It's on Audible, I think. So. Oh, you probably got to pay for it. Yeah, probably. Wow. Yeah, I, I've been seeing it, and, you know, that's the thing. It's like the ones on Stitcher, they eventually give them to us with ads. Cause that's the thing. It's like, I'm happy to listen to an ad. Yeah. I'm not Little of Hellfire, okay? I will listen to an ad well, I wonder to pay for my for my thing. I got to watch Captain America Death Too Soon today again because I was saying, let it have ads. Let the ads roll. I don't mind. Well, I just wonder if they'll do that eventually, because, I mean, they did that with Stitcher. Those other ones, they put them, on, they put them up on Stitcher, and you had to pay for them, and then eventually they uh, yeah. released them free with ads, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of people, I mean, I'm sure some people pay for it to listen to it right away, but, of course, you know, it's it's a comic book, it's a comic book universe podcast. I think the the internet frenzy over it it's going to be a lot less than in generally available stuff. And maybe they're trying to do something here. I don't know. So uh, I'm just waiting for the non-fungible uh, tokens to come into digital comics. And that's when then that's when things are really going to start to go crazy. Oh, I might. When I, ev- I might. Every digital download is its own non-fungible token. <laughs> I might have to. I might have to let you know. I might be able to listen to the, uh, the old man Star Lord uh, podcast. Oh, I don't cool. know. If it's, I don't know if it's because I have a Sirius XM account because they do podcasts now too. So I want. Uh, oh yes, actually, it's on Sirius XM. That's okay. why you have to pay for it. Okay. Or it's, okay. I have an account. Yeah. I have an account. So yeah, so I can listen to it. I'll, yeah, I'll let you know because someone was telling me about this at work. I guess there's a bunch of uh, yeah, like a bunch of famous names or like part of this. Oh yeah, there. no, they, that's the funny thing. It's like right now. All those billions of dollars that the billion billionaires have, it's actually in liquid investment capital. So, like, all these entertainment companies get to pay millions of dollars to name talent mm-hmm. to come and do voiceover work, which is really hurting the voiceover work economy in its own way. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so, yay! I know. Oh, wait. Hey, Russell, he's saying uh, it's a common theory, but do we think more MCU TVA is related to Kang? Well, yeah, we've said that. It's like they're probably well, yeah. they're probably preserving that sacred timeline to make sure Kang comes about. Well, I mean, that's one theory, or that the three timekeepers are Kang, Ramatut, and Immortus, yes. or possibly the Crimson Centurion, and then Ramatut is going to stage his attack from the from the flanks. On the side universe, because that's that's how that works. Um, I mean, I I was re- I was re- I read some of the Avengers Forever that miniseries that they were basically cleaning up continuity in that because that's where like was it Immortus is like basically you know used time or whatever to copy Jim Hammond's body. So yes, that body was the Human Torch and remained the Human Torch, but there was also a copy of it that became the Vision. Or uh, they actually yeah. they actually separated Kang and Immortus, so it's like Kang's like, oh, ha, ha, I don't have to be that idiot anymore. Ha ha ha. That, well, technically, he never had to. He just had to make a choice not to be him. Yeah, but he's like, oh, that's not my. De- it doesn't have to be my destiny anymore. Ha ha ha. Except it probably still is, because you know. Yeah. That it, it, it's like it's well, you know, and they did something similar to um, Iron Lad mm-hmm. in the um, oh, what's that? What's that series called with the? Um, oh, I'm forgetting the. I'm forgetting how the, what they called it. The. Uh, it was originally all the mutants who came and were like the variants, the variant versions. But they had like they had like Rebecca Barnes in it. They had Kamala Khan in it. Like, but old lady, oh, uh, o- old Kamala Khan. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting what they called that series. Oh, Exile is that Exiles you're talking about? Exiles, yes, Exiles, because they were all alternate timeline variants that were brought together to do 
to do basically go on suicide missions. It was great. Uh-huh. And um, one of them was Iron Lad. And Iron Lad's curse was that he had to relive becoming Kang. Because uh-huh. much like Kang not wanting to be a mortis, Iron Lad didn't want to be Kang. Mm-hmm. Fun fact is that there is another variant of Iron Lad where he is Team Kang, and that is the one that Doctor Doom manipulates along with the juvenile um, Annihilus to become Ultimate Doom. That uh, eventually, you know, uh, Monaco, the Prince of Magic, and the FF that was on Earth with the Future Foundation essentially owns. That's in the old Reds books, so that's a good one. So you know that's always one of my favorites. Every time he every time Doom gets beat up, that's that's always my favorite. And that issue that's gonna take a while to load. But anyway, but yes. Time Variance Authority didn't care about that. But um yeah. That's where the Living Tribunal wow. you know gives them the curse is you will get Gain a mark upon your face every time you hurt another human being, and but uh, yeah, I was reading Avengers Forever and the, some of that like that West Coast Avengers stuff, you know, where it looked like the Scarlet Witch went evil and was basically mm-hmm. a Mortis. Uh, and again, uh, th- now when I think it was like, yeah, yeah the Timekeepers tasked Mortis with uh, you know preserving the timeline that brought about the the Timekeepers. So maybe it's maybe this is them preserving their own timeline. Who knows. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that makes sense in its own right, too. It's like, well, we only come in because for what it's worth. And maybe that's maybe they're going to deal with the time twisters in this because there is the universe in which the time keepers. And that's another Thor book that predates the actual introduction of the time keepers Mm -hmm. where the time twisters were introduced. I have to look that up. But um, the idea is, is that something went horribly wrong in the creation of the time keepers and that created the time twisters and maybe that's the time war they're talking about they're like no what Kang Kang's a minor inconvenience you know my king is like you know he's a he's a human from earth who has a time machine yes we know those exist sometimes they're problematic sometimes they're not or let's- but the time twisters are what we're trying to prevent coming to existence well, maybe they do a variation on that. The timeline gets fractured, and the timekeepers become Kang, Amortis, and Ramat. <laughs> Who knows what they're going to do? That's the fun of shows, but we only got three episodes left. I know. At the time of this recording, because you could be listening to this twenty years in the future, like, well, now I got to look up what is this Loki show they talk about. There was a Marvel Comics. What is this thing? That's going to be like an MCU season one. Oh, what? <laughs> We're on season fifteen. Yes, and I was so glad when they replaced, uh, you know, Tom Hiddleston with Alan Cummings. It was such a <laughs> brilliant idea. I need Alan Cummings coming to just come in as old man Loki. Just, <laughs> I'm the real Loki. I predate you. I mean, the whole thing with. Uh... Sylvie, uh, like, you know, being able to jump bodies. Is this going to be our way of, you know, recasting Loki? We're always going to have a Loki. He's going to be like Doctor Who, and we're just going to be able to recast Loki as different people as time I goes thought you were going to say Doctor Doom there for a no, moment. No, 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 no. Like Doctor Doom 2099. No, you know, Doctor Doom made this machine that just rewrites your brain to be Doctor Doom. <laughs> so, he's, uh, which I actually love the fact that. Doctor Doom can rewrite any person's brain to be a Doctor Doom level genius and think they're Doctor Doom, which means that, dude, you could turn everybody in the world into a super genius, and you don't because you're a jerk. Uh- <laughs> yeah, but I know your whole thing with the rewriting brains, but I thought the Doom thing was kind of mysticism too, where it's kind of like he's pushing, I don't know, the soul or whatever out of their body. And he's well, he's he's got earth. two versions because yeah. you have the Kristoff version. Oh yeah, that's and that's see. the purely yeah. mechanical rewriting of the brain, <gasps> and then you have the Ovid version. Yes, the aliens. Yes, that's where you push your soul into somebody else's body. Um, oh yeah, I forgot the whole Kristoff thing. Yeah, <laughs> my friend. When it comes to how could I survive, Doom isn't picky. I mean, really, that's Doom is kind of like robot in. Um, in Invincible, where he's like, no, I, I knew I would die. That's fine. I just want my... I want yeah. someone to think they're me going on with life. That's better. 
You know, <laughs> that was always my plan. Um, and Doom was like, yeah, no, I don't care. So it's, it's, it's kind of like Doc Ock in that way. It's like, what, you killed a body? <laughs> I got backups, man. <laughs> you know? Little do they know that each one creates a brand new soul. And Doom doesn't want to make everyone in the world think he's him. Even Doom, even Doom's like the rest of us. Doom don't want to deal with Doom. <laughs> well, but that that is his ultimate thing. He doesn't want a world of super geniuses that can appreciate his intel- intellect. He wants a world of yeah. subservient Worshippers, people to his yeah. intellect. And that's why he's always a bad guy. I, I mean, Except in the one universe where he's a hero because he actually stops for five minutes and talks to, to Reed Richards. And they actually form a friendship and he builds human human connections. <sighs> yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, literally, it's just like not because he was not a jerk for one moment in his life. It actually allowed him to stop jerking his entire life. And that's a great thing. Anyway, talking about alternate timelines, it's all, all good because this is the TVA podcast, so we're good on this. I mean, this is creating the multiverse because I think they said they're like, oh yeah, the stakes on this Loki series are bigger than anything, you know. That's come well, you so know, far. that's an interesting question because it kind of seemed like when uh, um, when Sylvie mm-hmm. attacked the timeline, it was not to cr- recreate the multiverse. But to just have all of the timekeepers be dispersed, mm-hmm. so that there would be no one left in the TVA for her to attack. Because hmm. that seemed to be my take. So my take on it from the end of it is literally just that. Yeah, everyone was gone. Everyone had to go deal with all of these timeline variations that just occurred, and it was a lot of work. But they probably got it all taken care of for the most part. Mm-hmm. There might be one or two alternate timelines that exist now, but it was all stuff that they could mostly handle and that the whole purpose was just to get everyone out. And then, of course, Sylvie comes back, finds out that her magic doesn't work in the TVA, which is the one thing that hurts in the theory that she was raised by the TVA, that her magic doesn't affect them, which actually suggests that maybe they did come to Pruner and she escaped, and she's just been a running time variant this whole time. That's another possibility. She could have been a Loki for, she could have been a Sylvie for years running from the CVA. So. Well, all their, all their employees are time variants. I think if anyone comes from the greater multiverse, they either brainwash them and make, you know, and make them work for them, and if they couldn't do it with the Sylvies, they're like, ah, we gotta kill her. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. Exactly what the Sylvie timeline is is going to be interesting. I'm sure we're going to get that reveal in the coming weeks. All right. Any final thoughts on the TVA, how they came to be, what they're supposed to be, what they could be, uh, Philip? I don't know. I mean, I'd have to think on that. That'd be interesting to find out where the TVA actually start. Well, with the timekeeper, supposedly. I mean, in the MCU, at least. But yeah, I mean, that'd yeah. be interesting. Oh, well, yeah, mark, I mean, mark my words, it's six months to a year. We're going to get a story where, yes, the Timekeepers created the Time Variance Authority in the comics. Uh, well, the Timekeepers did create the Time Variance Authority. I thought they... Oh, did they? Well, so the last... And that that's where it's... Yeah. That's the idea. Is like the last member of the TVA creates the Timekeepers. Oh, yeah. And the Timekeepers go back and create the TVA. That closed circle thing, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, basically it's you chicken know, and the egg. Which yeah. is something that um Immortus says to Thor in his in the first reference oh, to yeah. the timekeepers. You know, that uh, but he actually says my life isn't a closed circle. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. And again, like I said, when you get to looking at those timekeepers who look a lot more like um uh the space fandom than Mark Grinwald you get this question, like, well, are they are they really something different? You know, are they using variants? Are the beings who are native to the limbo dimension the beings in this non time universe? Or is this just one of those things where it's like we appear different to uh, different people? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like Galactus. <laughs> exactly. It's all galactized. That's what I say. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the TVA is definitely always worth a deep dive. Everyone oh, yeah. should deep dive into it. And Loki, and quite frankly, why don't you do a deep dive into Ben Grimm? Because he doesn't get enough love. And find out what the heck Sharon Ventura is doing now. Because we don't know. Last I heard, she was selling mutant growth hormone on the uh, on the underground unlimited class wrestling circuit. <laughs> Got in jail. She broke out. She's doing what she's got to do. Maybe she can turn back into human at will. Now, we don't know. <laughs> Honestly, it's a much different story for her because she doesn't, although obviously the idea of being a transforming person still has resonance in every universe. So who knows where we go next, Philip? All right. Uh, Philip, if anyone wants to talk to us about a TVA, about Sharon Ventura, about Ben Grimm, about uh, Mobius, uh, M. Mobius, about anybody in the multiverse, how can they find you uh, and us as a people? <laughs> if you want to talk to me or my people, uh, yes, you will. You can email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And find links to all of our various social medias, links to the YouTube channel, links to the Patreon, links to merch, links to everything we do at uh, linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. Very good. And of course, you can always write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way they did back in Walt Simonson's era, at, cha- at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet things when I feel like it, when the timeline, when the sacred timeline allows. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. Thank you, Maz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been another episode of Super Connectivity. I hope you've enjoyed connecting with us. Please super connect with us again next week. Good night. Good night. Stay tuned. Next episode will be Super Connectivity 350. Whatever will we do? I'm working on it. Okay. At least I have have some extra time. Hey, we're pre recording, so I have some extra time to work on it. Okay. Yeah, we got two two in the bag, so. Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be something big, so tune in.